Hey guys, today we are going to go over some precautions for methanol fuel for a fuel injection application. I get a lot of questions about this, uh, about street driving on methanol, about you know some of the stuff, some of the myths that you hear from some of the old carbureted guys about methanol and how it ruins everything. Um, first off, I will say that methanol does require a little bit more maintenance than gasoline, but about the same amount of maintenance as like Q16. So I figured I'd make a quick video to show y'all what um, I've done and, and what's been successful for me. I've learned all these little things from guys over the years that have been running methanol longer than me. Um, <clears throat> and I greatly appreciate it, so I figured I'd share it with y'all. So, you bought yourself a drum of methanol and you go and you put it in your garage and probably the first mistake you make is you put it slap on the uh, concrete floor. Put it on a little piece of wood, nothing fancy. But just keep it off of the concrete to keep moisture out of it. So these drums, as long as they're sealed up tight, they'll last you a while. You don't have to worry about pulling moisture in if you can keep them up off of the concrete. So Amazon, like six dollars, get yourself a bung wrench so you don't tear your hands up trying to use a pair of channel locks to open up the bung. Um, buy yourself a new one of these pumps and store it in a reasonably clean environment. I always clean it out before I shove it in the drum and then I typically fill up a couple of these um, you know your, your standard five gallon pails I fill up a couple of these you know if I'm gonna go out racing for the weekend or whatever it is or go out for a street drive um, I'll either fill these go straight from here into my fuel cell but I always go through a funnel that's got kind of be hard to see but it's got like a little mesh screen in there okay this one's from uh, Mr. Gasket, but it's got a little mesh screen, keeps all the, the junk out of it. Uh, you know, from sitting around, you know, you get a little bit of stuff all over the place. It may fall in the drum. So always use a, uh, a screened uh, funnel. The other thing that, you know, some people argue with me, but I use a top lube. So this stuff right here, Power Plus, it's cheap. In fact, I get, I have a local guy who delivers me a drum of fuel with power with a, a bottle of this stuff for I think like 200 bucks delivered to my garage. Um, so it's kind of hard to beat. But I always run the the top lube. It'll take some of the bite out of the uh, out of the stinging of your eyes, and it'll smell, you know, whatever. This one's cherry, but they have a whole bunch of different you know scents. So storage wise, um, this is what you want to do. Do not leave it in these five gallon pails on the concrete. If you're gonna leave them in a five gallon pail, that's fine, but just keep them out of, you know, real high heat and keep them up off of concrete. This one's empty. I just left it there, you know, for this video. So that's for storage and uh, for moving it around. As far as the car goes, we'll look at that here. So this is my personal car. This is, uh, I street drive this car on alcohol, E85 and 93. I don't have any crazy fancy, you know, roll into the throttle and it rolls over to E85 or M1. I just run it all through one fuel cell. It's just easier this way. Um, the tank is black. The exterior of it's powder coated, but the inside of it's anodized. So uh, the reason you want to anodize it is because methanol will oxidize aluminum, bare aluminum. So when aluminum oxidizes, um, the, the key word there is, is oxidizes oxygen, right? So methanol isn't necessarily the problem. It's when methanol and oxygen kind of get together, they destroy aluminum. So there's a couple things, precautions that I like to take that have worked fantastic for me for years. Um, prior to doing this, uh, we, we, we had one problem where we had an injector hang open and it was from uh, the methanol crystallizing in the top of the injector and uh, and hanging it open, you know, I you know who knows what you're going to blame it on, but whatever it is, from now on this is how I do it, and haven't had a problem in years in my own personal car or some of the other cars that I deal with. They all kind of follow the same thing, and we haven't had any issues. So, anodize everything the fuel is going to touch. I know it's kind of hard to see in there, but it's black, so local anodizer here does a you know a half-assed job it, it kind of looks like crap 
that's why I uh, powder coat the outside of it so it's actually, you know, uh, it appears to look decent. But the important part is the anodized inside of the tank. If you notice all the fittings, you know, when you buy them, they all come anodized, which is good. But don't buy, don't really don't buy Chinese, you know, fittings and hose and whatnot. You want to use a, a PTFE hose. Um, you guys, anybody that knows me knows that I'm, I'm pretty adamant about this Earl's Ultra Pro stuff. But uh, a PTFE lined hose that is rated for methanol. That's extremely important. Otherwise, the stuff breaks down. It starts to clog up filters, filter baskets, and the injectors. Or it'll just hang an injector open. And I promise you, this hose may be, you know, $2 more a foot. But it's a lot less than putting a hole in a block. So, um, one thing that I learned from a guy a while back is this little trick. Down here, you can see there's a ball valve there. This is the vent for my fuel cell, okay? So there's a ball valve down there. Well, the ball valve's closed because we want to keep oxygen out of the fuel system. So I'm going to show you something else. We keep oxygen out of the fuel system up front. But the ball valve, if you don't have a ball valve on it, you have your typical rollover valve up here. And there's a rollover valve in that fitting. But when the car is not rolled over, it's open. So it vents. So it doesn't just vent pressure out. It also allows oxygen into the cell. So what we do when you park these things for like a week, fill the fuel cell to the brim. And so by filling the fuel cell to the brim, you're pushing the majority of the oxygen out of the system and then close the valve. So with no oxygen in the system, you can't oxidize. So that's the first thing that we, I typically do. I also use like one of these lids that have got a good, you know, an O-ring seal. Don't use one of those crap red, uh, you know, twist lock uh, fittings. And then the other thing you want to be mindful of is when the injectors come out of the engine, right? So um, again, this is my personal car. So this thing's been, it's a part right now for doing a couple changes. Um, so the injectors are out of it. But, so the fuel rails are off, the injectors are out, but we've introduced oxygen to the system, right? So that's a problem. So, to combat that, I use plugs, okay? So, just keep everything full of fuel and it can't oxidize. Um, I typically use these plugs uh, and well, with these fittings in them from Earl's to push the fuel back into the fuel cell. Um, or use them on the other end and fill up this hose after you've opened it and keep the oxygen out of the, the system. If the tank and the fuel pump and the fuel filter stay submerged in oxygen, you don't have problems with the fuel pump falling apart and deteriorating inside. Uh, that has happened to a couple people that I know just from having them sit with no fuel in them. So uh, a lot of people think they're doing themselves a, a favor by draining the system completely, but if you're not lubing everything when you drain it, you're causing more problems than you're, uh, than you're trying to alleviate. So seal it all up, right? Injectors are out of it. So seal it all up, plug up your ends and uh, you know, cap off your, your fuel cell. Um, keep all the oxygen out of the system, right? Close your ball valve. So now we're all sealed up. We have no way to introduce more oxygen to it. Obviously, this is inaccurate because I've got the lid open, but you know what I'm saying. And then the, the next thing to, uh, to look at is, that I want to show you is the pump and filter and why it's important to make sure that, the, uh, that it's being fed properly. So give me a second and I'll crawl up under the car. All right, so we're under the car. This is the line that's being fed from the fuel cell down into the pump. So I use a Waterman pump. Um, this is cable driven off the back of my oil pump. So Waterman is uh, actually now owned by Aeromotive. So there's a lot of people out there that sell Waterman and a lot of people that can help you size what pump you need for your uh, for your application. So I hit one of them up. This isn't a sales pitch. I don't sell anything. So, uh, so anyway, Waterman pump, it's below the fuel cell, right? So we're, we're under the trunk. 
and it's below the fuel cell so it's gravity fed. By putting the pump up front and hoping that it's going to suck enough fuel, you're asking for problems. So uh, if it's a rear fuel cell, it should be a, uh, in my opinion, a rear fuel pump. And then there's the cable. It's supported, you know, real well from for the first like 18 inches like recommended by, uh, by Waterman. And then it's supported the whole way up along the, uh, the length of the car. But this is the most important part right here. So it's kind of hard to see, but um, I use the system one filter. So it's 10 micron. This is what's going to save your injector, save your engine from all the little debris that you may have missed with your uh, with your funnel with the with the filter in it. So um, spend a couple bucks now to save a couple bucks later. System one is a great filter. Uh, there's some other uh, 10 micron filters out there. I believe Aeromotive's got one too. Just make sure that they flow enough um, gallon per minute for whatever pump you're using. So that's another one of those. Talk to your dealer for these parts and make sure that they interact well. But you want a 10 micron post pump and nothing pre pump. Okay. Um, now, last but not least, sorry, I'm kind of crippled, so I can't really move too well. Last but not least is uh, is oil. So I use three different types of oil with methanol. Depends on you know if it's mine or if it's buddies or if it's um, you know customers or whatever. But I, I recommend three different types of oil. The one that I don't have pictured now is Brad Penn, but uh, HPL. This stuff's great. It does very good at uh, keeping the methanol out of the oil. Same thing with Schaefer's. It's good stuff too. And the other one not pictured is Brad Penn, but don't expect, you know, lion's head or whatever the heck is, uh, is sold at Walmart to be the proper oil for your 2000 horsepower methanol engine. I know John's going to hear that and, uh, and, and curse me, but, uh, it's, it's true. You're, you know, you're better off with, with running a good oil. As far as oil changes uh one of the big things out there is that, that people think that you have to change the oil every couple passes or every every outing but with a good oil and either a pan heater you know so you can heat the oil up or if you street drive the car on alcohol um just get the engine hot enough and you'll cook the moisture out of the oil so uh my car again i street drive this car on alcohol and uh and it gets right around 11 to 11 and a half miles per gallon on alcohol. Um, it, it does great. And I use two sets of 220 pound per hour uh, semen deck injectors or Holly injectors, whatever you want to call them. And idles smooth, idles great, drives great. I have no issues. So I also did this so I can drive it around on 93 octane. Uh, that's why I wanted that, and I, I feel as if the smaller semen inject, uh, semen deck injectors are a heck of a lot more reliable than like the big billet atomizers. But that's all opinion. So whatever you got, hopefully this helps. Hopefully the uh, precautions I kind of laid out here for y'all will will help you, uh, you know, not have issues and you know clear up some fears that a lot of people have from going to methanol. It really is not a bad fuel. It's, it's, in my opinion, the best fuel out there for a turbo combo or a blower combo. Um, nitrous, you don't need it, but turbo blower, this is, uh, this fuel is where it's at. So this is Renegade, but again, Renegade VPM1, it's really the same stuff. Use your top lube, store it right, take care of it and actually care and you won't have any problems. So hopefully it helps. See you.